quadratics, what do I think of? I think of the quad stack from Burger King. Amazing. Look how delicious that burger is. Which algebra do you think likes that burger the most? Uh, oh, there it is. Wow. Well played. That's kind of freaking me out. So we're going to graph quadratics. So uh, let's get going on this. So quadratics. You know, I think of the quad stack burger. It has four patties, but that actually isn't what a quadratic function is. When we're talking quadratics in math, we're talking about a second degree uh, polynomial. So jot that down. And what does that mean? It means the highest power is 2. So if the highest power, like this one right here, is 2, then we've got a quadratic. So it's an old Latin word from square. It actually comes from square. Uh, the quad is in the square, and when you square things like x by x, you get this x squared thing here. So it actually means second degree, not four, so don't be confused with that. So this is the standard form over here, and this is how we're going to be graphing them when they look exactly like this. So there's a couple of different forms, but we're going to look at this whole ax squared plus bx plus c, where these are all constants. These are all numbers. So here's my first example over here, and let's scroll down just a little bit. Uh, so we can look at some of these parts. So when I have this quadratic equation right here, we've got uh, a, b, and c. I like to write these down, not so much for this first section, but for the sections coming up. This whole chapter is on quadratics. So the a term is going to be the 2. It's the number in front of this is the coefficient. And the b term is a negative 4, so it takes the, the number width. And the c term is a 1. So a, b, and c, the coefficients uh, of the x squared, the coefficient of x, and then the constant out here. So we're finding that I want to graph this bad boy. So if I want to graph something, uh, you know, I can just start plugging points. Like I can make a table of values, and I just start plugging points. I don't know what this is going to look like, but I know when x is negative 2, what is y? Well, I can plug that into the equation. So I can say, OK, I'm going to replace all my x's with negative 2. And it will be 4 minus x, which is negative 2, plus the 1. Now i got to simplify this a little bit, so clean this up. Negative 2 squared is 4, so this will be 2 times 4. Uh, negative 4 times negative 2 is a positive 8, and 2 times 4 is 8, 8 plus 8 plus 1, 16 plus 1, 17. So I know that negative 2 makes 17. And then I can repeat this problem. Now go back and put in negative 1, then put in 0, then put in 1. So it can get a bit tedious here, um, plugging and chugging. I'm going to go ahead and just show you a quick shortcut if you have the calculator. Feel free to do it and plug them all in, but if... Uh, you have one of these fancy calculators, it'll do all that work for you if you type it in. So I'm going to put my equation in there. This is going to be 2x. This is the x button we use. It says x, t, theta, and n. Those are for different modes, but this is the x, so we're going to use that as our x. We're going to square it, minus 4x plus the 1. And then up here in blue it says table. Right above the graph it says table. Anything in blue you got to use the second. So seconds in blue, so we're going to hit second graph. And it should take you to something somewhat similar to this. So this is actually the table of values. So here it is. And what's nice about this is if I scroll up, check this out, negative 2 makes 17. And in fact it gives me all my values. So I'm going to do a little cheat here and I'm just going to drag that bad boy over here and say aha, I have all of my table of values right here. So check it out. That's everything I want. Maybe I'll shrink it down a little bit and put it right there. So that's pretty cool. So if I wanted to fill in all of this stuff, negative 1 makes 7, 0 makes 1, 1 makes negative 1, 2 makes 1, 3 makes 7. So Or plug and chug the old-fashioned way, no problems there. Now these are all points on my graph. So I'm going to graph this. Remember, this is a point negative 2 makes 17. That's kind of off my graph, so let's start with negative 1. Negative 1 makes 7. It makes a dot right here. Uh, 0 makes 1, which is a point right here. Uh, 1 makes negative 1, so 1 makes negative 1. 2 makes 1. And 3 makes 7. So check that out. Ooh, interesting. This is actually what quadratics look like. So they kind of come down from up here. They come through here, and then they come back up. So this shape is called a parabola. Parabola. That's a B. Parabola. So the shape that a quadratic makes is a parabola. Excellent. Pretty cool there. So what is interesting about this, so we've only done lines really this year, is there's some couple interesting points. First of all, there's a vertex of the parabola. And the vertex of the parabola is just the highest or lowest point. So it's just the maximum point or the minimum point. Minimum. Ooh, my handwriting is a little rough. Ooh, maximum or minimum point point. That's what the vertex is. And in this case, it's a what? It's a minimum point. It's the lowest point possible. It's this point right here is my vertex. 
So there's my vertex, the lowest point possible. And in this case, it was what? It was over 1, down 1. And I can see it right here. This was the vertex of my parabola. 1 makes negative 1. So that's an important uh, piece. It's really going to use it for a lot of applications. It's pretty nice. What's the other thing we need to know? The axis of symmetry. Here's a huge formula. The axis of symmetry is this line that cuts it in half and makes it symmetric. Remember, symmetry is like a butterfly wings. It folds onto itself. So if you look, there's symmetry here. This point is the same distance away as this point. This point is the same distance away as this point. So you, it folds right in half. So it's kind of like folding in half. And then this is actually an equation. This is x equals 1. It's not a point. It's that line. It's that vertical line, x equals 1. Well, how do you find that? We need a formula to find the x symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. So that is a great formula to have for graphing these. So now we have some a couple of little things to help us out here. So we got the formula for x symmetry. We can find the vertex. We can fill in tables. We got the standard form. We got it all going on right here. Holy cow, that's awesome. Let's try this in a problem now. We'll do one more together. I usually like to start with finding these different things. So I'm looking at this, and again, I, I use function notation here. If that freaks you out, remember, that's just like saying an x and y. We're saying this is like the f of negative 2. When I put negative 2 in, when I put negative 2 in, I'm saying, what is that y value? So it's just different notation. Don't freak out there. Um, so if I put negative 2 in there, you could find it. You can uh, plug and chug all day long, replace all your x's with negative 2 negative 2 and simplify this out negative 2 squared is 4 times it by that is negative 16 that's going to be 4 times negative 2 is minus 8 plus 8 I think we'll end up with negative 16 so that's there it is right there and we can continue to fill in our points I think I'm going to probably end up cheating on this and using the calculator a little bit but feel free you can keep plugging and chugging that all the way in uh, before I get to that let's go ahead and find the axis of symmetry axis of symmetry is what it is negative b over 2a and since negative b over 2a what is my a b and c let's go ahead and fill those in a b and c now we don't need c this section but you're going to need it coming up so we might as well get in the habit a is going to be negative 4 b is going to be positive 4 and c is going to be 8 and then let's plug them in here so if that's negative b that's going to be negative 4 all over 2 times a a is what negative 4 simplify this we've got negative 4 2 times negative 4 is negative 8 4 over 8 is really 1 half. So at x equals 1 half is my axis of symmetry. So I like to go ahead and mark that first. Right here at 1 half, x equals 1 half is going to cut my parabola in half. And what's cool about this is somewhere on this line is my vertex. The vertex of this parabola could be way down here, way up here. I'm not really sure. It's somewhere on here. So I know the vertex is what? It's got to go through. The x value has to be on the axis of symmetry. I need to find the y value. So now I'm going to have to plug this in here. So I'm going to actually have to plug in negative uh, 4 times 1 half, square it, plus 4 times 1 half, plus the 8 right here. So um, if I simplify this, you know what? I'm going to show you another trick. Might as well go for it. Uh, if your table maybe didn't look like this right off the bat, there is another feature here. Above window, it says table set. So this allows you to change how it works. So if I go second window, this table set, this tells you where it starts. So mine will start at negative 2 and counting by 1s. But if you come down here to ask, change the independent variable, that's the x variable, to ask instead of auto, now it's not going to fill it out for you. Now it's a blank table. So if I want to know this one over here, I can say, okay, when x is negative 2, boom. Oops, did I change my equation? Ha! you got to change your equation. Sorry about that. Let's change our equation. So we've got negative 4x squared plus 4x plus 8. So that's huge. Got to change the equation. Got to be on the right problem here. Go back to the table, and I typed in negative 2 makes negative 16. So now I'm asking it specific values. So this is kind of nice. Uh, plug in 0 makes this, 1 makes this, 2 makes this. There's my table. What's cool about this is I can type in, what am I interested in here? Well, I'm interested in when the x is 1 half. So you can type in 1 half here. Hit enter. Ooh, and it tells you it is 9. So that is pretty awesome. Let's bring that into our thing here. And not only did I fill in our table like that, just like this, I went ahead and found out when the vertex is. So again, I don't mind you plugging and chugging. This just saves a lot of time. So that's 0, 8, Eight. Oh, wait a minute. Negative 1 makes 0. 0 makes 8. 1 makes 8. 
and 2 makes 0. Okay, so if I start to plug these points here, negative 2 makes negative 16 off the charts. Negative 1 makes 0 is right here. 0 makes 8 is right here. 1 makes 8. Oh, you can see the symmetry going on here, and 2 makes 0. So you can see the symmetry going on. Let me change colors here. And the question is, this parabola is a little bit different. When I put in 1 half what comes out, my table says that it is 9. So if I simplify this, you'll get 1 half is 1 fourth, so that's negative 1. Half of 4 is 2 plus the 8. It is 9. I agree with the calculator. It's going to be this point right here. So there's my vertex. And in this case, my vertex is a maximum. This is not a minimum anymore. It's a maximum. So it's coming up like this and then coming back down like that. So how do I know if it's going to be a max or a min? Well, when it's graphed, it's easy. That's the maximum point possible. But it all comes back to your A term. When A is negative, your parabola opens down. So if you have a positive, they open up. If you have a negative A term, it opens down like this. So it flips it over, and it's a negative. So negatives have a maximum right here. If it's a positive A term, it has a minimum right here. Whew. That is awesome. Very cool. So we are graphing these things. We are good to go. We only got one more problem to try. And what I'd like you to do is go ahead and pause it. Try it. See, ooh, before you pause it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Got a little excited here. Let me help you get going with the A, B, and C. Because this one's a little bit different here. And then we'll try it. So let's find our A, B, and C. Then I want you to find the axis symmetry. Then the vertex. Fill in the table. Graph it. Uh, a, B, and C. What is the A term here? It is 3. What is the B term? B is the number in front of X. Do you see it? It's gone. It's 0. This is the same thing as saying 3x squared plus 0x minus 2. So don't freak out. My C term is that. Go ahead and try it. I'm going to go ahead and pause it. Try it. See how it goes if you get a good graph. And I'm going to post the answer here. Good luck. All right, here we go. So I got my axis of symmetry to be x equals 0. Kind of weird because your B term is 0. There, you know, negative 0 is no such thing. It's just 0. And 0 divided by anything is 0. So I've got the axis of symmetry, and I just kind of want to draw it. As soon as I get it, I draw it. So there's the axis of symmetry. Somewhere is the vertex. So I came over here and said, OK, when x is 0, what's the y value? Well, you got to find the f of 0. So you got to plug 0 back in. This one I didn't do with the calculator. I actually plugged in 0. Ooh, look at all that hard work. Uh, I like 0 because it's easy work with 0 squared. 0 times 0 is 0. So it should be at 0, negative 2. So it looks like I've got this point down here at 0, negative 2 is my vertex. Is this going to be a max or a min? Well, it's a positive a, so it's going to open up. So we're talking about a minimum point here. That's going to be a minimum. And then I did cheat on this one. I used the table. But again, if you want to plug and chug, plug and chug. It looks like negative 2 makes 10 up here. Negative 1 makes a positive 1 here. Uh, 1 makes 1, and 2 makes 10. And you can see the symmetry. If it's not symmetric, something happened. But it's definitely being cut in half there. Draw in your parabola like this nice curve, not a point. It's a nice round curve. Boom, there it is. So we've got the vertex down here, which is a minimum. We've got our table, our axis symmetry, our vertex. That is all we need. We are good to go. So practice graphing these. Good luck on the match check. Peace out. Shine bright like a Brian. Shine bright like a Brian. I went on Xbox Live. I realized Brian was online. You and I were like Brian's on Xbox Live. Black Ops 2, Modern Warfare 3. Yeah, I want you to play with me. When you play with me, I'm happy. We're like boyfriends on Xbox Live. I knew that we become friends right away. Right away. The first time we played Black Ops 2 multiplayer. I saw the boosting in your shine bright tonight on Xbox Live. We're beautiful like Brian's on Xbox Live. You are my angel in disguise. We're beautiful like Brian's on Xbox Live. Shine bright like a Brian. Bright like a Brian. Shine bright like a Brian. Shine bright like a Brian.